Hello everyone, I'm Steve. I'm the OET, ILTS and PT trainer from UCAN English Tutoring, which has been helping more than 12,000 students to achieve their desired scores in these three examinations since 2008. In today's video, I'm going to assess one of uh, the nurse's letters. Uh, she works as a nurse in Singapore, and I'm going to assess her first letter at free of cost. Let me assess this letter now. At the top of this letter, she has written down the addresses details. She has written down Dr. Peter Frederick, general surgeon, and then Bluewell Hospital. Unfortunately, she has committed a couple of mistakes in this section itself. Let me go through them here. So firstly, instead of writing general surgeon, with the small letters, that is G, small g and small s, she should have written on capital G and capital S, plus she should have mentioned the in front of that. So it must be the general surgeon. That's how she must have written down. That is one of the mistakes. And Bluewell Hospital is okay. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Then she has written down the date of letter, which is good because that's in the correct format. I'm happy with that. And then she was able to write down the salutation with the correct prefix. And she has also written down the surname of the address, which is good. I'm very happy for that. Okay, let's go through the next one. <clears throat> After that, she has written down the reference details of the patient, <coughs> which is Angelina Jolie age 55 years that's all right she must have placed a comma here in between so that's one thing so after angelina jolie it's better to write down a comma okay so jolie it must be jolie comma all right let's go to the next one mrs jolie requires your specialized assessment and further treatment of at your hospital. She was diagnosed with the hemorrho uh, hemorrhagic, hemorrhagic um, tonsillitis and rheumatoidal arthritis, okay? She is due for discharge today. The problem <coughs> with this introduction paragraph is that she has written on only the simple sentences. All three of them are the simple sentences only, which is okay if you're aiming at C grade. But if you would like to achieve more than B grade, it is really recommended for you to write on a combination of complex and compound sentences in the introduction paragraph, particularly. Okay, so <clears throat> there's no grammar mistake here. That's fine, I'm happy with that. But <clears throat> the, you know, only simple sentences are used in the introduction paragraph. Okay, only simple sentences are used in the introduction paragraph, but you should have used a range of complex and compound sentences only in the beginning. Okay, it is always recommended that you use complex and compound sentences only in the introduction paragraph. In the following paragraphs, you can use maybe some simple sentences. You have to have the pro proper mixture of all these three different types of sentence structures. <clears throat> Let's say, if you write down one simple sentence, try to ensure that you write down one complex and compound sentence before you start writing down another simple sentence. <clears throat> I mean, that could be the approximate one, but yes, um, you can't write down more simple sentences instead of the <coughs> complex or the compound sentence. <clears throat> Let's go through the next one. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Mrs. Jolie was admitted on 16 February, 2019. Let's say she was admitted about four days ago. Yeah, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So five days ago. 
right? Today is 20, so five days ago. So you should have mentioned it. Instead of writing down just the date, it is, it's good to represent the information regarding the time, you know, using the days. So 16 February, 2016, could have been replaced with five days ago, okay? One day ago, two days ago, three days ago, so yeah, so that, that's fine, okay? 20 means, it's gonna be, okay. <coughs> sorry about that. <clears throat> the way we need to represent is, today is 20 February, right? That's how we need to assume. And then yesterday is one day, one day ago, I mean yesterday. And then that is 19, and then 18, two days ago, 17, three days ago, and then 16, four days ago, sorry. So this is gonna be four days ago, not five days ago. So it's gonna be four days ago, and this is 19. Okay, good. All right, let's go to the next one. She presented with the fever. How couldn't I identify this one? Interim or oh, extreme joint. Okay, extreme, that's actually E. But the way she has written on is different. And then X must be clearly mentioned. Extreme joint and throat pain, fatigue, dysphagia, and mild breathing difficulties. Her handwriting could have been better because this one doesn't look like extreme. So <clears throat> extreme handwriting needs to be improved a bit because sometimes when you write down the words together they don't convey exactly what message you want to share with <clears throat> all right let's go through the next one on assessment <clears throat> she has a low grade fever that's good comma tachycardia that's good as well um, but it's recommended to expand like at least <coughs> most of the units of measurements. Okay, it's bits per beats per minute, right? So she could have mentioned beats per minute. So instead of writing down just 102 B slash M, it's recommended to write down 102 beats per minute. Okay, it could have been much better. The same is applicable for Fahrenheit as well, if you can. And is elevated and elevated a blood pressure. You can't use, you can't split one word like this. Don't write like pre in one line and then sure in the other line. It's not good. Okay. So pre and then sure. Please do write one word in same line itself. So together, all right, do not split it. It's not good, it doesn't look <coughs> good. All right, she complains of, okay, let's say. <clears throat> there is one of the major mistakes that is committed by most of the students. They get confusion between the noun <coughs> and the verb in relation to compliance. Let's say <clears throat> this compliance Compliance is a noun. It is basically a noun. But the way she has been writing down is to tell the <coughs> verb. You know, it's a verb. She tried to she tries to use a verb here. So in that case, the you know the, this one should be replaced with compliance without t. So the one with the t is a noun, and the one without t is a verb. Remember that. Okay. So the way we can remember is that. <coughs> okay, t. Do you know t? T stands for T-E-E, -E, you know, a drink, all right? So drink is a noun, which means if you get the spelling with the T, then it's a drink. So we can call it T, so it's a noun. So if you <coughs> don't get this T, and then look at, yes, compliance, okay, compliant or whatever it is, okay? So um, without T, that's a verb. That's how you can remember. So there are many easy ways to remember the spelling of words okay do you understand all right let's go go to the next one <clears throat> complaints of bloody taste 
while swallowing saliva and noticed enlarged tonsils as well as coated tongue that's good she has written on very well except this mistake all right let's go to the next paragraph blood parameter of miss jolly reports revealed blood parameter of mr jolly reports no that's wrong this is entirely wrong okay so what she could have done is instead of writing down blood parameter of uh, mr sorry mrs i think it's mrs right let me have a look at it sorry <clears throat> okay mrs jolly blood parameter of mrs jolly reports so this is wrong okay <clears throat> so what she could have done is that she could have mentioned like this mrs jolie's blood parameter reports blood parameter reports okay and then she could have written on revealed that whatever she <clears throat> wants to write down she can do that please an increase in aso letter <clears throat> wbc and esr the problem revealed an increase she, she didn't write there are a couple of things okay in this case one is revealed increase in something okay so it's incorrect she should have mentioned revealed an increase in that's the correct answer that's the first thing the other thing is all these abbreviations were not expanded which is not good aso wb and esr so aso w bc and esr sorry esr all abbreviations such as aso wbc and esr need to be need to be expanded please you should understand that no abbreviations should be used in oet letter please if you use more abbreviations it's going to damage your score and it makes your letter more informal which is not good therefore she was administered antibiotic uh, amoxicillin injection 1.2 gram iv three times a day <clears throat> okay <clears throat> and then <clears throat> injection paracetamol 1 gram iv three times a day three times a day to reduce fever <clears throat> vitamin gorgin was advised to do and fluid replacement therapy was given okay the problem with this sentence is that if you write on really longer sentences sometimes you may lose control on your grammar which is not good all right she mentioned like she was administered <coughs> antibiotic amoxicillin <coughs> sorry about that <coughs> amoxicillin injection 1.2 gram iv three times a day so this is not good the reason is that she has been writing down the same thing here and here as well so you can you can write them down together in one go do you know what i mean i mean you can say um instead of starting down this one therefore amoxicillin and paracetamol injections were administered i mean you can you can write down the you know the dosage and frequency yeah, that's that's all right all together so amoxicillin therefore amoxicillin um injection 1.2 or you can say amoxicillin 1.2 gram and paracetamol um injections or paracetamol 1.1 gram injections were administered uh through intravenous fluids or you know you can write down um you know through intravenous mode uh, thrice a day so that's what we could have done that okay um yeah but the problem is i think she has uh, come you know included lots of things together so it's not good this is not good she could have you know right um shortened that sentence instead of writing down so much so please 
split the longer <clears throat> sentence that start with therefore okay and she should start with the not <clears throat> She was administered, but you need to mention the names of the medications first, and then you have to say where administered. That's it. That's how you need to do it. And then what she could have done is <clears throat> she could have uh, written down this one. Okay, Prothon was advised to do. To do is incorrect. Okay, you can't use to do. That's wrong. That's wrong. To do is <clears throat> more informal. So this is more informal. So use so use something informal situation. That will be much better. All right, let's go to the next one. <clears throat> and fluid replacement therapy was given. <clears throat> and fluid therapy and recipe, sorry, replacement therapy was given. That's correct. That's okay. She requested for. Let's go through the next page. She requested for operation after one week in your hospital. She requested for an operation. Um, she requested for operation. Now, this must be changed as <clears throat> for operation needs to be for an operation. Because operation is a countable noun, so you have to use an article, please. <coughs> In addition, her pain <coughs> has reduced. But, but recovery is not satisfactory. <coughs> That's okay. You need to put a full stop here. I couldn't see any full stop here. Satisfactory. <coughs> After that. Place a full stop after this word, please. Thank you. Mrs. Jolie has had diabetes mellitus since 1999 and was on self-administered insulin. So self-administered <coughs> needs a syllable in between. Self-administered, you can't write in two different words. That's wrong. You have to write on self hyphen and then administered insulin that's good all right <clears throat> let's go to the next one she was on <clears throat> and then you're writing down the medication for hypothyroidism uh, and then you have placed the comma that's not good remove the comma after hypo Thyroidism. Okay, please. Well, let's go to the next one. She drinks occasionally and is a chain smoker. Um, that's fine. <clears throat> it would be greatly appreciated if you could admit her <clears throat> in three days. I don't know what what you need to do. Okay, anyway, that's ah yeah, that's all right. In three days, right? <clears throat> Kindly note. She requested to be sent to nursing home for four days post surgery. Okay, so requested to be sent, send to. Okay, to be sent. After to be, we need to always use the third form of the verb that is past participle verb, not the present verb, not the future verb, or not the <clears throat> past verb. It must be a past participle verb. <laughs> To be sent <clears throat> to nursing home. Okay, now to nursing home. That is incorrect. To a nursing home. <clears throat> to a nursing home or to her nursing home or to the nursing home. You have to use an article or maybe the pronouns such as have. All right, let's go to the next one. <clears throat> For four days post-surgery. <clears throat> okay, post-surgery. 
again needs an hyphen in between because it is it's a word with the syllable since her husband will travel abroad that's good it will be beneficial for her if you recommend her to rehabilitation center that's right <coughs> rehabilitation center rehabilitation center that's okay but this one needs <coughs> an article before that the the spelling is <clears throat> needs to be improved as well it must be centered c e e n t r e okay all right let's go to the <clears throat> next assessment um to kids smoking that's all right if you have any clarifications you know if you have any clarifications that's wrong if you need any clarifications if you require any clarifications okay so <clears throat> if you have any clarifications okay clarifications means <clears throat> clarifications means um if you have doubts you can ask them and then get them clarified okay get them addressed okay that's what we call clarifications clarifications means the responses or answers kind of answers okay but the <clears throat> they have asking we have been writing down is not correct if you have any clarifications no <clears throat> if you require any clarifications okay that is much better <clears throat> but again the problem is that this one is not formal so it's better to use this way if you have any questions comma that's good that's all we need to write down that's more formal all right <clears throat> and then that should be a comma good please do not hesitate to contact me you are sincerely come out the charge ness but everything else is good <clears throat> all right let's go through the assessment criteria now okay one of the main problem areas for this student is to improve her grammatical accuracy grammar is not up to the mark she has committed so many grammar mistakes it's not good okay that's not good all right let's go to the next one um the problem with the her writing another is other issues are uh the placement of punctuation marks isn't that good <clears throat> placement of use of use of punctuation marks articles prepositions nouns and verbs is not good she needs to work hard <clears throat> on this one spelling could have been better because you need to use uh, an hyphen in between that's not good if you do not use it vocabulary vocabulary could have been better <clears throat> with the use of more formal words and synonyms of words from from case notes so that could have been much better all right let's go to the next one <clears throat> you have to expand all the abbreviations so you haven't expanded many abbreviations which is not good organization of case notes is not good relevant case notes are included in your letter that's the only good thing you have done in your letter unfortunately <clears throat> okay <clears throat> um connectivity could have been better as well
um, spacing and presentation of presentation means the layout of letter are good enough. I'm happy with these two areas as well. What else? Overall task fulfillments could have been better. Could have been improved. Okay. <clears throat> to me, this letter sounds like a 250, maybe a C grade maximum. If you work out on your mistakes, you must be able to pass the writing section of your OAT examination. You need to understand that these are not acceptable in OAT examination criteria. If you would like to receive your first letter assessed at free of cost, please send me a message on my mobile or WhatsApp number. That is plus six one four six eight four eight zero eight double seven. You can also contact me on my email address that is steve at ukenglishtutoring.com or you can reach me at www.facebook.com slash ukentutoring. I've been helping more than 12,000 students since 2008 to pass their OET, ILTS and PT academic examinations. I'm also glad to assess your speaking skill by conducting your first role play conversation in OET examination. Let me know if you need any assistance, please. If you find the assessment helpful, please click like tab and leave positive comments in regards to the areas of improvement. You can also share my video with others if you find it helpful. Also, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video and I wish you good luck with your practice. Have a good day. Take care.